Chapel a welcoming church, follow us on HopeChapelAmeZion.org, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Greetings from Hope Chapel Amy Zion Church in Utica, New York. I'm Reverend Sharon Ball, the proud pastor there. Let me first say, Happy Mother's Day to every mother, whether you have children of your own, adopted children, formally or informally, or whether you just have a nurturing, loving spirit. Happy Mother's Day to you and all that you do. Today's message comes from Proverbs, the 31st chapter, starting at the 10th verse. This is a familiar text of the church, especially on Mother's Day or women's conferences. But I would like to read the whole verse in case you're not familiar with this passage of scripture, because it is rich in instruction. You will find these are similar words. A wife of noble character, one who, who can find. She is worth far more than rubies, her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings good to him and not harm all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works it eager in her hands. She is like a merchant ship bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it's still night and provides food for her family, portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it out of her earnings. She plants a vineyard and she sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for the task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds a distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. And when it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes a covering for her bed, and she is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gates, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children will arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful. Beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. And for a title on today, today's mom, let us pray. Dear Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask now that you would come. Holy Spirit, open our ears so we can hear the word of God. Open up my mouth so I can speak your word. And Lord, let the Holy Spirit come into each and every one of our hearts so we may do the work that's been assigned our hands. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Well, Proverbs 31 is tall order, is it not? But it's advice. It's advice that a mother gave her son. And as he grew old, he realized the value of that advice was so great, he wanted to pass it on to his son. And so Proverbs 31 and 10 talks about the type of woman that his son should be looking for. And if he finds this type of woman, that he would be blessed beyond what money can buy. And she is more precious than jewels. He can trust this woman. You know, 
He can trust her because she's not bitter over what life has done to her and the things that she's encountered. She's not posting her grievances on Facebook. She's not complaining about her life to all who listens. This woman trusts God. And because she trusts God, she knows that better things are ahead. And she knows that she's presently being blessed. You know, when we're angry and stressed and hurt, it's easy to lash out to other people, especially those who are closest to us. Husbands, wives, children, they make easy targets. But when you depend on the Lord, you know that he's working things out for your good. And so you can be what the Bible calls long-suffering. I'm not talking about accepting any type of abuse. I want to make that very clear because that's not what this is about. Long-suffering is understanding that trouble is going to come your way. And if you don't have trouble today, you had it yesterday. And if you didn't have it yesterday, just keep on living. You're going to have it tomorrow. That's just the way life is. But how you deal with trouble, how you deal with heartache, how you deal with hurts and pains, that is the quality of woman that his father is giving him advice about. Because if we truly take our burdens to the Lord and leave them there, like they say, you can have a sweet, sweet spirit. Today, people have a habit of punching down, making other people look small so they can look big, posting people at their worst moment. That is just not a way to live. And so, as we deal with hard times, we find a way to do it and still keep ourselves loving, kind, nurturing. Proverbs 31 tells us that this woman is hardworking. It doesn't matter if you stay at home with your children or your working mom or your corporate mom. This woman has a plan for her life. She doesn't vicariously just live from one day to the other. And the same diligent care that she took to get her education, that she takes on her job, she takes that same diligent care and planning in her household. Understanding that running our homes takes a plan. You don't wake up every morning and guess what's going to happen. This woman understands that meal planning and like the book that made Marie Kondo famous, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up and Decluttering, takes a plan. Home is vital to all that live there, and the operation of it should not be taken lightly. Your home is where you can come out of the world and get strength and get peace and get some solace, hopefully. One thing I love about modern moms, moms today, is they understand how to seek help and information like never before. I've learned much from younger moms in my life today on how to do things better, easier, to work more efficiently and not harder. I have met young moms that really have a plan for their children and their lives. Knowing how to ask for help 
and receiving it gives opportunity for everyone in your household to live their best lives. It's also understanding that your work in the house has a value and it helps your children and your husband appreciate that value. This woman of this ancient text is a shrewd businesswoman. I think we forget that when we talk about the Proverbs 31 woman. She looks for ways to increase her abilities so she will be paid her worth. This woman is hardworking and she plans her work and she works her plan. This woman is thoughtful and intentional in ways that not only she runs her business, but also the way she runs her household. But she does it not in a way that she looks worn out, tired, abused, and abused. Yes, she takes care of herself also. This woman understands balance. She has a practice. She practices her craft. She sees a good deal and knows how to seal the deal and bring it home. It's important to her not just to gain wealth and money and status, although she does manage her money well. It's important to her to be part of the solution of her community, not just to complain about it. It was the staple singers who had a song that too many people are complaining about the president not doing nothing about air pollution. Put your hand off your mouth when you cough. That'll help the solution. Each of us can play a part in, in, in resolving some of the things that is wrong with our communities. And this woman, this Proverbs 31 woman, understands that and does something about it. But she doesn't do it at the expense of her spiritual and physical health. She understands that her wisdom comes from the Lord. You know, when Jesus wanted to relax, there was a woman named Martha, whose home he used to go to. Martha used to cook and clean and do all the things that's necessary to receive a guest. But one day when Jesus was there with his entourage, Martha is cooking and cleaning and she comes to Jesus and she says, you know what? I need some help here. And my sister is enjoying uh, sitting around, enjoying herself while I'm doing all the hard work. Jesus did not tell her that her work wasn't important. He just says that you have to put things in a certain order. Choose the good part. First, take care of your spiritual health. Once you do that, then you will understand how to organize your home to do all the rest of the things that you need. But you need a relationship with the Lord first and foremost in your life. And you need to understand it for yourself. Mama may have, sister may have, but God bless the child that's got his or her own spiritual relationship with the Lord. And so balance, as much as Proverbs 31 seems like an exhausting list of to-dos for women, it actually talks about balance. It talks about how she has been able to have a business, have a functioning home, be encouraging to her husband and her children in such a way that she herself still took care of herself. Balance is the key here. And I think modern moms today have that balance a little better than some older moms. They understand that they don't have to sacrifice themselves in order to serve others. It's important for all of us to gain this perspective of balance in our lives. 
that's why she can get up while it's still dark and not count it robbery. You know, some women do all the work, but you got to hear about everything they do. I did the cooking. I did the cleaning. I did, you know, I'm so tired. Well, it's time to plan your work a little differently. Plan for people to help you. Ask for help in a way that doesn't make other people feel like they're slothful for not helping you. Encourage them to know that the work in the house is meaningful, important work. That's why you do it. And for them to join you in this important work. One of the things that I really love about this psalm um, is it says at the end that her work speaks for her. How she lives her life, the things that she does, speaks for her. She doesn't have to go around bragging. She doesn't have to go around talking about herself. Her work speak for her. The fact that she helps the poor speaks for her. The fact that she makes sure her family is closed speaks for her. The fact that she earns money and she handles it well speaks for her. The fact that she's connected with God and she looks for God to give her strength and direction speaks for her. This is a woman who not only attends church, but is involved in church. She wants to study the word of God. She goes to Bible study. She goes to Sunday school. She wants to understand for herself what's going on in that ancient text. So she can apply it to her life because she knows that she'll be blessed by it. This woman takes the time to, to put her ducks in a row. It's something we all can learn from. Because when we realize that life is complicated and there's a lot to be done, but God does not call us to do it by ourselves. That's why being a part of a church is so important. The church is an organism that works together to do kingdom building. No one person can do church alone. We have to depend on one another to get the job done. Likewise is our lives, our homes, and all that we do. In today's world, it gets more complicated every day. It seems like another level is laid upon us, like COVID-19. But because we listen to the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit gives us discernment, we are able to weather the storm that comes our way. It doesn't always make us happy, but we can do the right thing at the right time because God is speaking to our spirit. We have to know, even in times like these, when we're shut in the house, and mothering becomes very difficult when people are underfoot all the time. You, mo you used to could get a little break, but now your household is tighter and closer together than ever before, which is why planning still works. Like this woman, we're going to have to look at our life, not the way we want it to be, but the way it is today. Look at it and how can we ask God to help us discern how to run our household differently than we did just a few months ago. We may have to rearrange our way that we clean and cook and do our scheduling and all those things, but it takes planning. And this is the, the capstone of this Proverbs 31 woman. She understood how to plan. And that planning came from her relationship with God. We call it discernment. But it still takes someone willing to listen. And so, even in times like these, we have to realize that we are never alone. Even if you're in the house by yourself, our Lord and Savior says, I will never leave you alone. Take the time to be 
a Proverbs 31 woman. Read that passage again. It's not necessarily a yardstick to measure your life by. It's more like a guide to help you walk through your life. Every situation is different. But the governance of God in your life is the same. He will help you no matter what. And if you haven't made a commitment to be a part of the body of Christ, Mother's Day might be the best day you could do that. All you have to do is confess with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord and believe that in your heart and you're saved. That's, that's how easy salvation is. And if you want to connect with a church to help you study God's word, to help you understand um, that you too can have that discernment, that wisdom that this, this ancient text talks about. Hope Chapel is a welcoming church and we will welcome you any day even during these times you can connect with us through facebook through twitter instagram or on our website it's hope chapel a m e zion dot org on our website, you can fill out a, a page to get more information about our church or even if you're interested in joining our church. And so I invite you to do that. Again, happy Mother's Day to every mother out there. May you have a blessed day. And like the old folks used to say, may the work you've done speak for you with the benediction know that each day is a blessing from God it's all about how you plan it and use it let us pray now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before your presence with exceeding joy the only wise God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord all glory majesty, dominion, and power, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and may the peace of God go with you. Enjoy your day, Mom. Yeah.